Oh boy, I wish it was that easy and can be encapsulated in, in one, uh, one single word but, uh, uh, or, or a single sentence, but these things are much more complicated. Uh, I would, uh, to begin with, if there was you know, literally one learning, uh, I would say you need to have a very, very strong and empowered uh, professional management team. And that, that's not just me, but the many people at ACASA uh, that are part of the management team that don't get to face the camera because they're the ones that really build the airline. They're the ones that lay the foundation. They're the ones that run the airline. And without, uh, without a highly professional and empowered management team, one can do nothing. So if, if you want me to boil it down to just sort of, you know, a single sentence, then that's what it would be. May or may not know, but uh, we had set our sights to deliver 18 aircraft by March of, uh, of 2023. We delivered 19 aircraft by March of 2023. And at 18 aircraft within the first seven or eight months, that would already make us the fastest growing airline in the history of global aviation. So in 120 year history of global aviation, no airline has taken delivery of 18 aircraft within seven months, and not only did we do 18, but we did 19. You know, I'm happy to report that the first half of 2023 has far exceeded that. But it wasn't just growth for the sake of growth. Um, we had set ourselves, um, you know, multiple targets, one of them being really service excellence in terms of not just, you know, how warm and friendly our, our uh, airport and in-flight experience is, but also how reliable our operation is. And by every metric, and these are metrics that are made public, we are India's most on-time airline, uh, literally for the first half of 2023, in fact, dating back to 2022 as well. Um, the feedback we get um, on our customer experience, that people use words like warm and friendly and empathetic. So I couldn't be happier with the, with the start that we've had. And that is translated into into our load factors for a new airline like us to average load factors above 80 in the first nine months of operation. With the kind of growth that we have, I think is nothing short of spectacular. Uh, and so our customers have responded, our employees, the kind of enthusiasm they have, uh, you know, like I said, I just couldn't be happier with, uh, with the start we've had to 2023. So maybe a year ago we were a little over 200, 250 employees in that neighborhood. Today, we're over 2,500 employees. So we've been hiring at, you know, pace of over 175 employees per month. By the end of this fiscal year, we'll be around 3,500 employees, uh, maybe just, you know, a little bit less or a little bit more. So the, the pace at which we are hiring people is very rapid, but I'll tell you that we've had a, a pretty amazing employee response. People view us as genuinely an employee-centric company, one that is extremely respectful, one that is very professional, one obviously that pays you know, on par with anybody else, and one where the ability to actually develop your career is perhaps second to none globally. So if you look at our pilots, there's no, you know, there's no airline in the world that has an ability to actually promote pilots and grow pilots uh, like ACASA, when you look at our flight attendants, when you look at our engineers, when you look at our corporate staff, you know, the, the fact that we are growing as we are gives employees really the opportunity to develop their careers in a manner that is just not available out there in a highly professional customer centric environment. And so we've got an amazing response from our employees. Uh, we've got a home that we think they'll be very happy with for decades to come. Uh, and so, you know, that's that's how we have we have grown from 200 odd to 2,500 over the course of the last 12 months. We will be hiring in advance of our need because for a growing airline, you don't hire based on your current fleet. You hire based on the fleet that you're gonna have three or four months because you know people that, that come with a highly skilled workforce also has a training footprint. And so we'll be hiring you know, 300 pilots over the course of the next few months you know, multiples of that in terms of cabin crew, multiples of that in terms of, uh, you know, airport customer service and security staff, as well as, uh, as well as engineers. Uh, and so that's, that'll get us from the 2,500 to the 3,500 number, 
by the end of this fiscal year. Uh, by the end of this year, uh, we're very excited. Um, we continue to maintain our target of launching our first international flight by the end of this year. We're working hard towards it. Uh, as you know, uh, to launch international flights, you need to get your 20th aircraft, which we should have in the next 45 to 60 days. But it's beyond that, right? We'll get our 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th aircraft all before December of this year. So we're not hyper-focused on the 20th, uh, but by the end of this year, we will launch our, uh, our first international destination. Uh, absolutely, I think if you look at the orders we've placed, if you look at the orders some of our competitors have placed, I think we will, uh, we will be and reach that equilibrium. Now, I will tell you there's a, there's a third element to it, and I'll put this in balance. It's not just a two-pronged balance, it's a three-pronged balance because infrastructure is another element of it. You may have a lot of demand, you may have a lot of capacity coming in, but the question is, does the infrastructure support it? And that's where I'll say absolutely yes. A few years ago, 70 airports over the course of the last several years, our government has been extremely proactive in developing this infrastructure. We have close to 150 airports now with a target to 200 airports. It's not just that, but it's the MRO capacity. It's the fact that India is a net exporter of talent, skilled talent, whether it's pilots, engineers, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think we'll, we'll find a very, very good equilibrium of demand, supply and infrastructure you know, unfolding over the course of the next, you know, 20 to 30 years. I think the Iran scheme plays a very important role. I think we have communities in India that were able to experience air travel. And I don't mean experience for the sake of, you know, getting on a plane once. I mean experience in terms of how air travel can give them back time. You know, take a 24-hour journey and cut it down to two hours or three hours. I mean, something that is valuable for them. You know, you have migrant workers that historically have spent, you know, taken two weeks off or four weeks off, of which they've spent three days getting to back to their villages and three days getting from their villages back to wherever they need to go. So, you know, 30, 20 percent of their of their holiday may just go on on traveling back and forth and and schemes like the Iran scheme give them back their time. Their time with their families is valuable. Uh, and so I think it's an incredibly important scheme. It's a scheme that we hope to participate in uh, as well over the over the you know course of time. And uh, and I truly hope that we continue this scheme. I'd say that, you know, being innovative is viewed as this incredibly intelligent, smart, sexy kind of thing. Um, but honestly, having in aviation the humility just to copy is what wins in the long run. So I'll tell you what we're doing is we're just copying from global best practices. We don't have to innovate just to feel intelligent. What we're doing is if you've got an empowered and professional management team, because you can have uh, you know, a view strategically of what one has to do. But implementing it is where sort of the devil lies in the detail. You can say, oh, you need to buy aircraft cheaply. But what does cheap mean? Because there are 50 different parameters, which if you don't get right when you buy your aircraft to begin with, you'll pay for, you know, eight, 10 years down the road. And so having a professional empowered management team that is able to implement global best practices is what we are focused on. We're not innovating for the sake of innovating. You know, like I said, we hope we hope to have the humility just to copy what has worked in other parts of the world and be able to have the the, the, the professionalism and the focus and the planning and the fortitude to be able to actually implement that because it's, you know, 10% inspiration, as they say, 90% perspiration, and we're very much focused on that 90% as well. Well, first, I will say that uh, we are a category-defining airline. I, I wouldn't want to be pigeonholed into a particular type of carrier. Uh, certainly, cost is important to us, but today we are India's most on-time airline. 
Today we've got seats that have an extra inch of cushion. We've got, I believe, the most comfortable seats in Indian aviation. We've got USB ports on some of our aircraft today. Uh, it's unfortunate that we weren't able to, to put them on all of our aircraft uh, because of supply chain constraints. But now, within the course of the next four to five months, every single aircraft is going to have a USB port. Uh, we're going to have device holders. We're going to have larger overhead bins. The food that we offer our customers is really, you know, industry defining. You can't get, I had a, a, a croissant with cranberries and chicken yesterday. I thought it was delicious. And I'd rather pay a little bit of money to get that kind of croissant than be offered veg, non-veg for free. To be honest, that's me. May not be the case for everyone else. So my view is that the customer experience that we have, and the reliability, the food that we offer, the warmth of our flight attendants, it's second to none. So why did we form an airline that has service excellence and a leading cost structure? Because that's what we think is required to be successful.